Rumors say that Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, puppet master of ChatGPT and Elon Musk's nemesis, has scheduled a closed-door meeting with government officials in Washington for January 30th. The topic is the coming of AI PhD-level super agents. I don't know what this is either, but I have some speculations. The word AI agent has become used to refer to AI systems that, given a goal, can independently work out an action plan and draw on other tools to complete it. That is, you don't need to give them step-by-step -step instructions, you tell them what you want to do, and they'll occupy Russia for you. Google has already introduced Gemini 2.0 for the agentic era, which means that it can, for example, add calendar and Trees on your behalf, which, let's be honest, is not how we envisioned the AI revolution. Last week, OpenAI released Operator, a research preview of their first agent that can browse the web for you and then take actions like ordering ingredients for a pasta recipe. Could you find a, a recipe of linguine with clams uh, from our recipes website and add or ingredients to uh, the grocery cart. I'm not doing anything from now on. The operator is just doing and I'm just watching what he's doing. What is interesting with the operator is that it is using browsers that are built for the human and it is using the seeing the exactly same screen that I'm seeing right now and using the keyboard typing and mouse clicking to control the browser, just like human would do. Still a far way to Russia. Operator is currently only available if you sign up for the $200 top tier, but one of those who tested it, Casey Newton, reports that at the moment using Operator is significantly slower, more frustrating and more expensive than simply doing any of these tasks yourself. So I think I'll keep my $200. I'm not sure what a super agent is. To me it sounds like a type of bathroom cleaner, but possibly it means that it's not one agent, but more like one agent controlling an army of other agents that can communicate with each other. But what does it mean that a super agent is a PhD level? That it writes 90% of text as footnotes? Probably not. One thing it probably means is that these agents passed PhD level exams. These tests have been done for many large language models in different fields. Already two years ago, GPT was able to correctly answer about half of the undergraduate and graduate level questions in a physics exam correctly. I think it's reasonable to expect that today's models would score 80% and up. Just last week, though, researchers at the Center for AI Safety released a new AI test which they called Humanity's Last Exam. That includes questions from all scientific disciplines submitted by experts. At the moment, the best AI score below 10%, though looking at the questions, I suspect that's better than most humans would do. But I doubt that passing tests is all there is to the PhD level tech. This is because there are indeed many aspects of PhD level research that can plausibly be done by AI agents more efficiently than by humans, most obviously literature searches. This could be good for many things from fact-checking or summaries to identifying good research topics and funding opportunities. That alone, however, doesn't explain why OpenAI sees the need for a closed-door meeting with the government rather than making a public announcement. The secrecy suggests that their new agents have uses that the government might not want to see in the public domain. Maybe there are security concerns over potential military applications, especially when it comes to biological and chemical weapons or computer vulnerabilities. Or maybe they're considering using these agents to replace scientific advisors to the government. What could possibly go wrong? Now that you mention it, a lot of things could go wrong with PhD level AIs, because much of what's in the published scientific literature is nonsense, and much of what isn't nonsense is not in the scientific literature. 
Sociologists call this tacit knowledge. It's knowledge that for the time being only exists in people's brains. This is why I think that if you want to create PhD level AIs, you'll have to bring in human experts to train the AIs. Otherwise, the AI won't learn how to tell nonsense from no nonsense. That said, PhD super agents, if they ever see the light of the day, will make one hell of an impact in academia. This is exactly because a lot of what gets published in academia is nonsense already. The future of academic publishing is that papers will be written by AI agents, be reviewed by AI agents, and be read by AI agents. And in return for that, your taxes will go to someone with a PhD. It'll be great. So much about my misgivings about academia, but somewhat more seriously, AI agents could indeed be useful in research, especially for literature searches. For the time being, I'm skeptical, though, about them doing independent scientific research, because often part of the problem is to figure out what a good goal is to begin with. But certainly it won't be long now until OpenAI releases its super duper agents that will be able to do this as well. So enjoy your last days in research before AI comes to take your job. And don't worry, once you recover from the shock, being a YouTuber isn't as bad as they say. This video has an interesting sponsor, which is Vsauce with the Curiosity Box. The Curiosity Box is a subscription service that gets you four science-themed surprise boxes a year. They come with science toys, plus books, puzzles, t-shirts, and more. I love stuff like this because it reminds me just what is so great about science, and it's also something I can do with the kids. The most recent Curiosity Box, for example, contained this sundial, though this being January in Germany, I can't show you how it works, there's no sunlight. However, the box also had a form to imprint nanogratings into chocolate that give it a rainbow glow. I did this and it worked. One doesn't see it very well in the video, but I'm pretty sure I didn't imagine it. I found this all to be solidly done and well designed and nicely explained, so I'm happy to recommend the Curiosity Box. If you're a curious science lover, this one is definitely worth having a look. And of course I have a special offer. If you use my link curiositybox.com com slash Sabina or the QR code and the code Sabina25, you'll get 25% off your first box. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.